So I'm going to give you a very quick tour of the Firefly software. Firstly, there's a login screen and you can see there's lots of heat users here. We can set them up at different levels so we can have people with very limited access to the software, uh, super users and advanced users and so on. Uh, I'm set up as a, a super user so I can do most things and I'm just going to log in using my passcode. Um, here, um, I get the option to open existing protocol, create a new one or select recent protocols that I've, I've been working with. I'm going to select create a new protocol because I want to show you um, how to write a simple protocol. Um, this is the instrument I'm connect connected to, so uh, I'm just going to say OK to that. And then it takes me into the protocol writing part of the, the software. Um, down the bottom, I've got add plates. So I'm going to select plates from the directory. I've got 96 wall plates, 384 wall plates. These are just the ones I've downloaded. There's a huge database of plates that you can download. And there's also what you've used recently. So I'm just going to use this, this 96 well plate that, um, that I used previously. Um, I'm going to add, um, I can add column or number of columns or kind of the whole plate. So I'm just going to add that to this working list. I can give it a name. So I can call that uh, samples. Um, I'm going to add a second plate and I'm going to choose the same plate again for speed. Uh, and I'm going to call this second plate um, reaction um, and then I'm going to transfer samples from samples to the reaction so first of all I'm going to want some tips so I can also add other items in this bottom menu here uh, so I'm going to add some tips any object that you highlight its properties are always in the right hand side box over this right hand side of the screen so I can change here let's make them smaller tips so let's go with the 50 microliter tips you can see I've got filtered tips as well in there I change color so the tip boxes are color coded to, to show the different tip types so now i've got everything i need to do a simple transfer and i can click on add a step here and here i've got pipetting steps dispensing steps for our non-contact dispenser and then other things like moving plates shaking pauses etc so i'm going to use this copy step up here which is in pipetting and i'm going to go from samples to reaction now that I've got this highlighted, I can also set the volume that I want to actually uh, pipette. So let's say I'm going to do 10 microliters. And I could choose a liquid class or I could go into the advanced uh, settings and I could actually, I've got a lot of fine control here over my pipetting, what speeds I go, if I have blowout volumes, air gaps, put a pause in, extraction speeds, tip touches, lots and lots of control. Um, to, so that you can really fine tune the liquid handling. Um, so I'm just going to leave that with a kind of default settings. Um, let's say I now want to add um, um, a dispense step to this. And actually, I've just realized that if I tried to run this, it wouldn't work because I've not actually put any tips on. Um, so if I um, select my little forklift truck and um, put tips on, I can drag the tip box in. And I can actually just move that before the actual step. So um, that now would work. Um, so I've got tips on, I've transferred the samples. Let's say now I now want to add a reagent using my dispenser. So I can add reservoirs to this. Uh, again, on the right hand side, I can choose, there are six syringes I can choose from one to six. I can do the same liquid with all six for speed, or if I just want to limit it to one, I can do that. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I've now got a reservoir with one liquid in. Um, if I add my steps, I'm going to choose the fill step um, from the dispense section. And I'm going to say I want to dispense from this reservoir into this plate. And with this highlighted, I can set the volume that I want to, um, to use. And again, I'm just going to say 10 microliters for ease. Here, um, with a non-contact dispenser, you generally can leave it on default and it will just work. There are a few other presets in there for specific things, but most of the time that's not needed. And there is an advanced settings section here, but normal users would never ever really need to go to that. Um, so I've taken my tips, I've done a transfer, I've added a reagent. Let's say I now want to put it on a shaker. So I'll do a place on step, I'll add a shaker, here and I go shake reaction onto the shaker and then let's say I want to shake it for um, 
a few 30 seconds say so again right hand side i can change my time the default there is is um, a minute i'm just going to change that to 30 seconds i could also change the, the shake speed um let's say i'm going to put 2000 in 2000 rpm that is and that's my um that's my shake step done and then finally let's say i want to get it back off the um, um the shaker so i'm going to do take off and here i can just drag my plate to off and it already knows that it was on the shaker so it's uh it's taking it off the shaker for me so i I'm going to stop there in terms of adding things, but um, you can see it's very quick and easy to build up a, a protocol. Once you've done that um, and you've got your list of things that you used in the, in the process, you can go to deck and I've only used three things, so there's not much on here, um, but I could just drag these into place, which is fine when you've got so few things. Um, or um, I can undo this. And I've got a little magic wand button, which when you've got lots of plates and lots of tips is quite handy because it'll put them in the most optimal places. So it just pre-populates the deck for you. Um, then you can add a description. So I could write, um, this is a test. And you can write as much as you like there. And it's just quite useful for other people who come to look at it. Um, it will keep a track of the history. I haven't got history because I'm literally just writing this. But if I came back and added and changed, I could log this as I go. Uh, and then finally, you come to the point where you can actually um, execute the protocol. Um, now, it's actually not going to let me run this because it's telling me that I've still got tips at the end of the protocol. So actually, if I go back to my steps, what I'll see is that I put tips on, but I didn't take them off. So if I now take them off um, and go back to execute, my next button is now available because I'm not breaking a rule. So there is validation on this that will stop you running things if they're wrong. If I go to next here, it shows me all the things I need for the protocol. Um, and then it takes me through a loading guide. So literally one by one, it shows me um, if I need to empty the, the, the syringes from a previous run, load the new one syringe in this case, um, showing me what the deck should look like and then showing me where each one should go. So I can follow this step by step, tip set in lower deck position one, L1, um, plate one in upper deck position one, plate two in upper deck position five, and then fill the reservoir, add the reagent trough, and then it shows the setup is complete. And then finally, it will allow me to uh, to run the protocol. Um, so it shows me all the steps, shows me what the deck looks like, what time has elapsed once it starts running, and then when it will be will be complete by. And I can hit the play button and uh, and it will run. I'm not connected to an instrument at the moment, so there's not much point in doing that. Um, then finally, there's the uh, community area. Uh, just give you a quick look at one of these, uh, but you'll you'll get the idea from that. So if I go into labware. Essentially, this is a database that I'm connected to that has our full list of labware. Um, you can search it by, if I search like Batman Coolter, for example, um, there's a couple of plate types on there. Um, so protocols will be the same for pre-written protocols, liquid classes for liquid classes that you can download. Um, so a very useful set of things, set of tools, database, and things that you can add to make it easier to use the system and, and give you access to um, ready written um, and methods. Then you've got the system. There's manual control that actually allows you to control each part of the system. It's very good for um, uh, error recovery, for example, to be able to drop into this and do things and then jump back into the protocol. Um, and then there's also things like machine logs. So it keeps a log of every run that you've done, um, what labware you've actually got installed and what liquid class you've got installed. So. Um, that was a very, very quick run through, but hopefully gives you a flavor of, of the software, which is incredibly intuitive and very easy to use.